Hi guys, welcome to our channel Applied Physics. So today I am going to explain about the Division and Germer experiment. Okay. So first of all, what is mean by Division and Germer experiment? Okay. So how it can be useful for us? Okay. So the main uh, useful of this Division and Germer experiment is nothing but it will or it is the evidence for the matter wave. First of all, what is mean by matter waves here? The matter waves are nothing but I already told you within the last class what happened whenever we are uh, uh, consider one particle okay so while we are applying certain amount of energy to this particle so then what happened it due to the absorption of energy it will be in the motion that means uh, it will be moving from one point to another point or it will be moving from one region to another region whenever it will be moving from one region to another region what happened it will compulsory exhibit the wave nature it will compulsory exhibit the wave nature then these waves are known as a matter waves okay so those are the matter waves so i already told you the division and germer experiment is the evidence for the matter wave so that means the matter wave is nothing but it will consisting of wave as well as a particle okay so by using the Diagonal and Germer experiment, we can prove that only. That means the particle will compulsory consisting of wave nature or the wave will compulsory consisting of particle nature or both are associated with each other. We can prove that by using this Diagonal and Germer experiment. Simply the Diagonal and Germer experiment is the evidence for the matter wave or it can be proved that the every particle is associated with the wave or every wave will associate with the particle okay so for this division and uh, why we are called as division and germa experiment why because this division and germa experiment was introduced by the scientist division as well as a germa so that's when we can call it as division and germa experiment so for this division and germa experiment so we need certain instruments so what are those instruments the first one is the electron beam or electron gun the first one is a electron gun second one so what is the second one second one we have the target so what is the second one target so what is the third one electron collector the third one is the electron collector so the we need these three instruments for this experiment okay that for the division and germer experiment so we have the three major instruments what are what are those electron gun target as well as a electron collector okay so these three are placed in a vacuum tube or in a glass tube okay those are inserted within a glass tube okay simply we have the three uh, instrument and those are in uh, <coughs> inserted within the glass tube okay so once you observe within uh, this diagram what happened within this diagram we have the low tension battery okay so low tension battery okay so this will be connected to whom electron gun here so electron gun is nothing but it is a filament only okay electron gun is nothing but it is a filament only so whenever we are supplying the uh, certain amount of voltage by this low tension battery to the electron gun what happen it will supply or it will produce the electrons it will produce the electrons not only one electron it will produce a number of electrons so that's when this producing of electrons is known as a electron beam okay this straight line is known as a electron beam okay so then after we have the one more connection here so this is a single slit cylinder we can call it a single slit cylinder okay so the what is the uh, use of this single slit cylinder okay once you observe this single slit cylinder is connected to whom it will be connected to the high tension battery okay so single slit cylinder connected to the high tension battery so then what is the use of this single slit cylinder okay so while we are applying the external voltage by this high tension battery what happen the electron beams velocity will be increases that means a uh, Whenever the electrons are moving from electron gun to the single slit cylinder, the velocity or the speed of that electron beam will be increases within this single slit cylinder. That is the work of this uh, single slit cylinder by the high tension battery. Okay. So comes towards the next one, target. Okay. So this target is nothing but it is a nickel crystal. Okay. It is a nickel crystal. Target is nothing but it is a nickel crystal. Okay, here it is a nickel crystal. Okay, so what is the use of this uh, target? Simply the use of target is nothing but it will diffract it. It will diffract the uh, electron beam, okay, which is incident on it. Okay, so whenever the electron beam incident on this electron, uh, 
target what happen it will be diffracted by this electron uh, target only okay so whenever the electron beam incident on the target what happen that electron beam will be diffracted in all possible direction not only in single direction okay it will be diffracted in all possible direction that means in this direction in this direction in this direction okay so in that manner it will be uh, diffracted in all possible direction that is the work of this target okay so then after the last one electron collector okay so this uh, this is your electron collector okay so this one this is your electron collector and uh, this electron collector is placed on the circular scale okay this is your circular scale okay so this is your circular scale circular scale okay so and this uh, this electron collector can freely moving on the circular scale okay electron collector can freely moving on the circular scale so what is the use of this uh, electron collector here simply it will collect the number of electrons it will collect the number of electrons which are diffracted from this target okay this uh, electron collector will collect the number of electrons or an electron beams which are diffracted from this uh, target okay so and uh, this electron electron collector again collected to the galvanometer okay so what is the use of this galvanometer whenever the galvanometer will detect the electrons okay so or it will having certain amount of electrons what happen it will shows the deflections whenever the electron collector collect the electrons the galvanometer shows the deflection okay so this is the experiment we have uh, these are the instruments we have okay so how we do the experiment simply and so here we are uh, supplying certain amount of uh, uh, voltage by the low tension battery whenever we are supplying the voltage by the low tension battery what happen the electron gun will be heated okay it will be heated so due to that heat it will produce the electron beams it will produce a electron beams that means here, here we have the number of electrons okay so this electron beam entered into the single slit cylinder okay so this uh, producing of electron beam will moving into the single slit cylinder whenever it will be entered into the single slit cylinder what happen by this high tension battery okay the speed of this electron beam will be increases for example in before case it will consisting of 10 meter per second okay for example okay so now it will be consisting of 100 meter per second 100 meter per second that means the use of this uh, single slit cylinder by the high tension battery is not much it will increase the speed of the which one the electron beam okay so comes towards the next one here the, uh, the electron beam again moving out from the single slit cylinder that means uh, uh, it will consisting of high amount of speed so this uh, high speed electron beam incident on whom it will be incident on the target okay so whenever it will be incident on the target what happen here this electron beam will be diffracted in all possible direction not only single direction it will be diffracted in all possible direction okay so but here we took only one okay we'll take the only one direction okay so why we are take the one direction means uh, here why because here for example this one okay so at both of this okay so at this direction only we have the maximum diffraction okay or we will having the maximum absorption of electrons so that's why we took this angle only how much the diffracted angle here 50 degrees of diffracted angle here we have okay so simply this electron beam will be incident on the target whenever it will be incident on the target what happened the, the all the electron beams are diffracted in all possible direction not only single direction okay so for example this electron beam is moving like this okay it will be moving towards this electron collector so then what happened this all the electron beams are collected by the electron collector for example if the uh, if the electron beam will be diffracted in this direction then what happened this electron collector moving to this direction and again uh, it will uh, this electron uh, beam was absorbed by or collected by this electron collector that means uh, this electron collector can freely moving on the circular scale due to that one only it will be absorbed the number of uh, diffracted electron beams which are moving from the target okay so that is the work of this electron collector so whenever the electron collector absorbing uh, the electron beams which are moving from the target so then what happened the galvanometer will shows the deflection when the galvanometer shows the deflection the work of galvanometer is nothing but it will uh, it will detect the external current so that's when whenever the electrons are moving uh, due to the motion of electrons what happened the current will be generated so that current will be uh, shown by this galvanometer okay 
so this is about the experiment of uh, Darjeeling and Jarma experiment. Simple experiment. Simply we are we are supplying the load uh, voltage by the low tension battery by the uh, electron gun. What happened? It will produce the electron beam. Those are moving into the single slit cylinder. What is the use of this high tension battery? It will increase the speed of the electron beam and it will be incident on the target. Whenever it will be incident on the target, here the electron beam will be diffracted in all possible direction. Okay. So but we are taking the 50 degrees of diffracted angle. So why? Because at this angle only we have the maximum diffraction. Okay. So our ma maximum absorption occurred. So that's when we will take the diffraction angle how much are 50 degrees. Okay. So whenever the diffracted, uh, uh, whenever the electron beam is diffracted, so then what happened? Those electron beams are absorbed by this electron collector. Okay. So whenever the electron collector absorbs the electrons, the galvanometer will show the deflection. So here, at the 50 degrees of diffracted angle as well as the at the 54 volts at the 54 volts of a high tension battery okay so once you listen carefully here at the 50 degrees of diffracted angle and uh, at the 54 volts of high tension battery we have the maximum diffraction we have the maximum diffraction okay so that's when we took those values so capital v is equals to 54 degrees oh, sorry 54 volts and uh, here the angle theta is equals to how much of uh, 50 degrees of diffraction okay 50 degrees of diffraction angle we have okay so 54 volts and uh, 50 degrees of our uh, diffractor we have the maximum diffraction okay so this the experiment we have so then how we can prove that it is uh, it is the evidence for the matter so for that one only here we are again considered the de broglie wave equation or the de broglie wavelength so what is the de broglie wavelength we have lambda is equals to here the de broglie wavelength lambda is equals to 12.27 by under root v angstroms okay so here lambda is equals to 12.27 by under root v how much the voltage we are applying here at the high tension battery here 54 volts we are applying at the high tension battery so that's why we are substituting that value under root of 54 okay so while we are substituting lambda is equals to 12.27 by under root uh, uh, 54 so then we will get the lambda is equals to 1.65 angstroms okay so this is the value we have lambda is equals to 1.65 angstroms okay so that means we will get the de broglie's wavelength in a which manner in a which mode by the practical mode not the theoretical one okay by the practical mode so we are supplying this much of voltage that much voltage will be sub, uh, substituted here within this equation then we'll get the wavelength of de broglie so theoretically how we can find out the theoretical value okay so for that one we are uh, consider Bragg's equation here okay so according to the Bragg's what happened here Bragg's equation <coughs> what is the Bragg's equation n lambda is equals to 2d sin theta n lambda is equals to 2d sin theta okay so n n is nothing but order of diffraction which order of diffraction we are taking here n is equals to 1 that is the first order of a uh, diffraction we are not taking here okay so we need to find out the lambda only okay so d d is nothing but interplanar distance d is nothing but interplanar distance of which one interplanar distance of the nickel crystal that is a 0 0.91 angstroms okay 0 0.91 angstroms okay so sine theta what is the theta here okay so here theta is an not a diffracted angle okay here it is a scattering angle sorry here it is the Bragg's angle. How we can find out the Bragg's angle here? So once you observe here, so for example, this is a nickel crystal or target. Okay. So whenever the electron beam is incident on this nickel crystal, it will be diffracted in all possible direction. It will be diffracted in all possible direction. Okay. So how much the angle here? We have 50 degrees of diffracted angle. Okay. So what about the remaining angle? This total angle is the this total angle is the 180 total okay so 180 minus 50 how much 180 minus 50 diffracted angle how much uh, here it is a 130 okay so 130 that means uh, here we have the two angles one and two okay so 130 by two 
how much here it is a 65 degrees okay so that means the bracts angle how much here 65 degrees okay so that's really the bracts angle here we have the 65 degrees simply okay so this is a nickel crystal here and the light uh, the electron beam is incident here and diffracted how much the diffracted angle 50 degrees of diffracted angle we have okay so then what happened what about the remaining two angle side angles here this total angle is a 180 180 minus 50 how much a 130 but here we have the two angles 130 by 2 okay so 130 by 2 is nothing but 65 degrees that 65 degrees is nothing but our brax angle t here theta is a brax angle okay so while we are substituting all those values within the above equation then lambda is equal to n is the one so uh, lambda is equal to 2 into 0 0.91 into sin theta sin 65 okay so while we are substituting all these values then we will get the lambda is equal to 1.66 angstrom okay so while we are substituting all those values within the above equation okay so then we'll get the lambda value lambda is equal to 1.66 angstrom okay so once you observe these two equations are these two wave, uh, wavelengths okay lambda is equal to 1.65 and here the lambda is equal to 1.66 okay so almost all both are from the Bragg as well as from the de Broglie both are similar to each other okay so this is the theoretical value and this is the practical value both are uh, almost are equal so that's when we can say that okay so the Darjean and Germer experiment is the evidence for the which one matter waves okay so here that means uh, the matter waves are always consisting of particle as well as a wave nature okay so I already de Broglie said that the particle always consisting of moving particle always consisting of a wave nature okay so that will again practically proved by this uh, Darjean and Germa experiment okay so de Broglie suggested in the theoretical manner okay so by one equation okay that is the lambda value okay so but the Darjean and Germa uh, was a uh, prove that uh, it is in a practical mode okay so this is about the Darjean and Germa experiment thank you and I will meet in the next video